Hi, Gen Chem Lab students. I'm going to do a really quick video summarizing how you can get ready for week two of lab because I'm getting some really good questions about how to prepare and what to do. So first off, everything you need to know is in the lab manual that you received in lab this week. Um, I'm gonna share the digital version of that. You can also access that yourself digitally on the Blackboard website for our lab. So we're gonna start there. Here's, you know it's the lab one because it will say lab in the title. <clears throat> so when you go into this, you can find the syllabus, which is a very handy document. I gave that to you at the end of lab this week. And on the syllabus, it has all your due dates for the lab. So for example, you can see that we have lab next Tuesday, right, right at 8 a.m. And you have to turn in the pre-lab for the experiment that we're doing that day, because pre means before lab, right? And so that'll be due right at 8 a.m. when you walk in the door. And then you also wanna turn in your experiment one report. And notice there's a little asterisk, a star right there. That means that experiment one report also needs to be submitted online. I don't grade the online copy. I'm only gonna grade what you turn into me in, in, in the lab space when you get there. Um, but you can find all the experiments and everything here as well in the syllabus. That's all printed for you in the lab manual already. So we're gonna look at that document next. Before I do, I wanna point out the introduction to laboratory safety video is right here. We watched this in lab. But you might want to review it because remember, we're going to have a lab safety quiz at the beginning of our day on Tuesday. So make sure that you take a second to review everything we talked about, which is summarized on the lab safety contract that you took a copy home. And maybe even watch this lab safety video again, make sure you remember it. So we'll do the quiz after you've turned everything in and then we jump into the experiment. I'll explain what we're gonna do. I'll explain some safety stuff, how to dispose of the waste, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, sometimes I even go over the pre-lab a little bit because you might need it. This is the experiment we already did, okay? So I wanna show you where to find all the information to complete your work. You should have filled this page in entirely in lab. This is essentially the same information you need to type up for your data section in your lab report, okay? So you're gonna take what you wrote down on paper and just type it. And um, I've already shown you here a good way to organize that information. So you should pretty much just type up the same data tables that you wrote down. The calculations that you need to do, these should be on paper, handwriting, not typing. The calculations you need to do are explained right here. I went over an example during lab of some of it. Um, so you might wanna look back at your notes for that, but you'll do this on paper. I usually do my calculations before I write the introduction or the conclusion or anything else. Calculations really set the stage for how you're gonna approach the rest of your lab report. And so your lab report in this case oops, needs to contain an introduction, the point of an introduction, and you can read a lot of details about it here by clicking on this link, or it's in the beginning part of your lab manual, it's the same document. Um, the introduction is really where you explain what you tested and why. So it's gonna be a little bit of background information. Sometimes that looks like defining vocabulary words. Sometimes it is also about providing any information that somebody would need to have in order to understand why, what your experiment was. Uh, so in this case, phrases like uncertainty and trace contamination and kind of the stuff that I spoke about in the beginning of our lab experiment would be good things to include definitions for. You also need to have hypothesis built into your introduction. So remember that a hypothesis is something you can test. And so the hypothesis that you would write about for say the trace contamination part of this experiment might look like say, uh, 
a sentence about wanting to test how many times you need to rinse a beaker to prevent trace contamination. Okay, that's something we tested in the experiment, so that's a good hypothesis. I wouldn't say something like about eliminating all possibility of trace contamination because sometimes students will write a hypothesis like that. It doesn't have anything to do with what we actually measured. You don't know if you've eliminated every possibility of contamination. That's impossible to do, really. Um, but like having a well-worded hypothesis will help you figure out how to answer the questions at the end and in the future help you figure out how to write a discussion. So we went over in class four different hypotheses. I hope you wrote them down, so make sure you check your notes, that we were tested. All of those should be discussed in your introduction. Okay. Another way to figure out what hypotheses are being tested is look at what's being asked of you at the end of the report. So at the end of your report is, in this case, we're going to do some questions. Okay, So this part of this bottom half of the last page of our experiment here outlines what needs to go in your report. Your introduction that I just talked about, your data, which is everything you gathered in lab, including your observations, all typed up in tables. Calculations are handwritten answers to the ones I have highlighted here. So you're just going to show all your work. That's all you have to do for calculations. There should not be any sentences there. <clears throat> your results are going to be more typed tables. But instead of being the data that you gathered in the lab, these tables are going to be the answers to your calculations. And then the end of your report will normally be a discussion or a conclusion. In this case, what I want you to do is just answer these three questions in complete sentences. And you want to refer back to your results. All right. So your answers need to be based on your results, not based on what you thought would happen. OK, so that's the basic structure of a report. Everything should be typed in normal size font. It doesn't matter how long your report is. Uh, in science, actually being short and sweet is good. It means you're clear and concise and your information isn't very wordy. Um, but everything except the calculation section should get typed up. And what you're gonna do then, once you have typed it, is you need to submit it on SafeAssign. SafeAssign is how we check for plagiarism. So after you finish your report, you're gonna to go to our lab Blackboard site. I'm gonna impersonate a student for just a second. And that way, um, that way it'll look the same to you. Okay, here we go. This is the student view. So you'll click on experiment one lab report submission. And you can see that it's due Tuesday at 8 a.m. There is a rubric here. So a rubric will help you figure out if you are doing the right thing. You can click on it and you can see each category and each section and a description for what, you know, for example, in your introduction, one hypothesis should be about rinsing glassware. In fact, two hypotheses we talked about really involved rinsing the glassware. And an excellent score would get you two points in that category. And here's a description of what that looks like. So you can click on each of these um, and they all outline what you need to do, okay? Um, that's the rubric. You can resubmit if you put the wrong file up there or it wasn't complete or whatever. You can resubmit as many times as you need to. I'm only going to grade the last one you gave me. And I'm going to use the physical copy to grade with. <clears throat> All right. And so I'm just going to pretend like I'm going to submit an assignment. So what I'll do is go ahead. You can either, you could just type your report in here. I don't recommend doing that. It doesn't save it as you go. I think submitting an attachment is the best option. So you'll click here and choose whatever 
uh, document you typed your report into. I don't know where that document went. I'm just going to pick this PDF. You want to choose a file type compatible with Blackboard. So PDFs, Google Documents are not compatible. You need to save them as a Word file or a PDF. If you're using a Macintosh, don't submit a Pages file. The fonts and stuff get messed up. And sometimes it doesn't show me anything at all. So save it as a PDF or save it as a Word document, a .doc, and name it something. Okay, and then you just want to make sure you click submit. I can't submit it yet because it hasn't uploaded, but once it finishes uploading, then you just click submit. Okay, and you can make sure that the document is correct because you should be able to see it right here in the, in the window. Okay, so that's required for every lab report when we have a typed portion. So experiment one is our first example of that. And let's see. Oh, the pre-labs need to, to be completed. So in our lab manual, we're going to be doing experiment two this week. So experiment two starts on page 15 and it goes to page 30. You're going to want to read those pages before you come to lab because most of the answers to the questions in the pre-lab are contained in the procedure, okay? So what I mean by that is we go to experiment two and we wanna read all of the introductory material. You might even be interested in clicking on these links in the digital version to learn more about those topics. Sometimes it's a video, sometimes it's a reading, depending on the topic. We want to be sure to take a look at some of the hazards that we're going to be on the lookout for. And then it comes procedure section. Part one is called separation of a mixture and part two is called physical and chemical changes. You're going to do both of them in the lab. Experiment two has several hypotheses we're testing. Um, Make sure you bring your lab manual because you're going to fill in some data tables directly in the packet. So you need to have that with you. The pre-lab questions are always the last page of the experiment. So this is page 30 of our lab manual that you have. And what you do is you, you write out your answers to these questions, these five questions, inside of your lab notebook. Right? And then you're going to turn in a copy of that to me. Just like I showed you in lab, the lab notebook will copy for you. You don't have to write it twice, okay? You're going to turn in that copy to me for grading. You're going to keep the original in your notebook, okay? So almost all of these, most of these are either something we've already talked about in class or they're answered directly in the procedure and you just have to read it, okay? So that's what you need to do for lab. We're, we're going to have the safety quiz. We're going to have our lab report number one due. And we're going to have our uh, pre-lab ready to go. Now, I'm aware that Monday is Labor Day. And probably most of you don't have printers at home. So I wanted to let you know, it, you can print for free in the library and in the learning commons. A lot of these things are going to be closed on Monday. And so you might not be prepared with the physical copy of your lab report at the beginning of lab. The Learning Commons opens at eight, the library opens at eight, so you can't come in before lab to print it either. So what we're gonna do for this one time because of the holiday weekend is if you submit your online report like I just showed you before you come to lab, that means you have turned it in on time. If you need to go and print it, in the Learning Commons or the library later on, that's fine. You can submit it to the basket on my door or you can bring it to office hours to turn it in. I would appreciate it if you could get it to me on Tuesday sometime, uh, but I understand the limitation is that Monday is Labor Day and you may not have access to a printer. So just make sure that you do submit your report here 
online before 8 a.m. on Tuesday and we'll be okay. All right. If you have further questions, as always, please let me know and I'll do the best I can to answer. I'll see you Tuesday. <laughs>